October 5th, Saturday morning, DJ Big Boss, Ian Cameron, Big Ragu. I am Drew Martin, breaking down the games before kickoff, 12 noon Eastern time, right around the corner. So hopefully get some winners in before that. DJ Big Boss from the state of California. It's West Coast. It's not too early. Welcome in, buddy. How you doing? Hey, in the words of my guy, Tupac, and, and just a little fun fact about me, me and Tupac share the same birthday. But uh, as my guy, Tupac, say, you know, I'm up early in the morning, breath stinking as I'm yawning just another sunny day in California, Drew. I'm happy to be here this morning. What's going on, gang? Oh, I love it, man. You can rap anytime, baby. I like hearing that. Or not too early for any rap, especially Tupac rap. We also got Ian Cameron, north of the border in Hamilton, Canada. Welcome in. Happy Saturday morning to you, man. Happy Saturday morning, guys. Uh, fresh off a, a win for the local team last night, the Thai Cats, getting the job done. Dane Evans, our guy. Uh, turned into a hell of a quarterback here in the CFL. Uh, good to be with you guys. Former Tulsa Golden Hurricane, by the way, uh, to re relate it to college football. Uh, good to be with you guys. It's another Saturday of college football. Let's get after it. Yeah, Tulsa. It got a big game today against SMU. And uh, also, yeah, I saw that. The Hamilton Ticats ran away with it last night, scoring, I believe, near 50 points. So looking good up there. And last, certainly not least, from the state of Florida, I believe, Mr. Big Ragu. Welcome in, buddy. Top of the morning to my guys. Top of the morning to the chat. Hopefully you guys tailed some action on the uh, Cincinnati Bearcats yesterday. I was a little depressed UCF lost, but, you know, I had to go against them in that spot. And uh, we're looking to get on some more winners today and break it up and chop it up with the chat and see what games we can put everybody on. Well, good looks there on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Unfortunately, I lost on it. Shows how important the quarterback position is. Big Ragu, what did you take away from that? Do you think, uh, what, just UCF not having McKenzie Milton was was a big thing there? What, what did you see going into that game? Yeah, we talked about that off camera, and he, Ian brought up some great points there. You know, the thing about these college kids, you know, we just hope they don't break their spirit as a team going forward, you know, because this – you know, they come off a couple of devastating losses early in the season. It's not – we're not even in middle October yet. And, uh, you know, they have two losses already. Tough schedule-wise for them, back-to-back -back FBS plays, you know, when they went up against Pittsburgh and the loss that they took uh, over there. But, you know, going forward, you know, they're just going to have to regroup and figure some things out. You know, just – they're still going to run the up-tempo. They're just – you know, maybe defensively they got some struggles. And, you know, that was a double revenge game for Cincinnati. So – you know, that, and Cincinnati was well prepped for that game. So, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. Hopefully they'll be competitive, which I'm sure they will be. But just we'll see what kind of uh, how Vegas adjusts to these guys also in the offshore books. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, case study in terms of handicapping. You know, I felt like athletically wise, UCF was right there, if not had more athletes. It's just, you know, the turnovers, the the the, the freshman quarterback on the road really making mistakes. So uh, good call there on the Bearcats. Hopefully people out there listen to Big Ragu. I was on the wrong side. So we got a bunch of people here. In the chat box, Fat Fist, Paco Healy, Comic Ricky in the house. Bunch of low baggers in here. Brett, uh, S11 Sports, nothing ordinary sports. Everyone, welcome in. Happy Saturday morning to you. Let us know what you're betting and why. Get it out there on the show. Guys, we got a, a couple big matchups today and then open it up to just – Bets across the board, full Saturday college football card here. Starting off in the Big Ten, we got a uh, noon Eastern kick here. Iowa, Michigan, big one in the Big Ten. Uh, the Hawkeyes catching four on the road. Big Ragu, you got any interest here in this Big Ten matchup? We got a slight interest here. Um, Iowa, you know, Kirk Ferentz, 20-year-plus veteran. He's like the second-longest tenure coach in college football right now. Iowa does a lot of the good things, that you know, the necessary things on a balanced attack, the way they approach their game. Now, if you go back and look at their common opponents, I think the only common opponent was in conference with these guys. They both blank Rutgers. They both they both gave them a goose egg. Iowa not so much on, on lit up the scoreboard against them, but Michigan probably did a pretty good job in a must-win game for them coming off a tough loss uh, against Wisconsin. So the look I have on this game here – I mean, every game going forward for Michigan is going to be a big game for them. Uh, Harbaugh's on a hot seat. We know that. Uh, I know the line's been bouncing back and forth. It opened uh, pretty high and bounced back down to like three and a half. Now it's back up to four. So there has been some uh, action coming in on the other side. But I think the number's going to settle in right here around three, three and a half before game time. I think, you know, some of the Sharps are going to come back in on Michigan. I like the look uh, Michigan has in this particular game. I think they're going to run a, a more balanced attack. 
Uh, I think Iowa State, I mean, Iowa is a little more vulnerable towards the pass. We haven't seen Shea Patterson really open up in a big game against a big, big opponent. I think this is the game that they can kind of get off dead center with that look for uh, Shea Patterson. I expect them to uh, to to grind it out more or less and then maybe open up the game in the second half. So I'm on Michigan minus a three and a half, four in this game. All right. And like you said, Big Ragu, it is bouncing around a little bit as high as five down to three and a half. Now pretty much four across the board at SBR odds right now. Guys, make sure to be checking out SBR odds. Make sure you're getting the best of the number, having more than one sports book. Also, if you bring the cursor up over time, TV shows you which channel it's on. Iowa, Michigan on Fox. We got the 14th ranked Hawkeyes at the 19th ranked Michigan Wolverines minus four almost across the board pinnacle laying a three and a half total of 48 right now uh DJ big boss man this is a big one in the big 10 you interested in getting involved hey I'm I'm, I'm in Long Beach you know uh city of Mr. Snoop Dogg and they always yelling out east side and I like <laughs> the east side of this competition with Michigan in here. I mean, situational wise, you see a you see a man down. Um, you you got to know that uh, they try to get back up and get back on their feet. And if you're gonna jump on this train of Michigan uh, trying to bounce back a little bit now that they broke their maiden a little bit last week, scoring some points on offense, uh, we already know they had defense. It's all up to the offense right here. They have a coach that could be a great, but, uh, you know, he's thinking up the field constantly here. And uh, things got to change. You know, the, the, the sun must shine on the dog's ass someday. And today's the day for Michigan right here to try to put it back on the road. And I want to hop on this right now, especially since uh, Big Ragu already on it. So I, I want to hop on the train right here. And I'm yelling east side all the way to the bank with Michigan today minus the points. Oh, man. Two guys already on Michigan. I'll tell you, Ian, uh, I'm thinking Iowa's the side here. You know, getting points, I feel like they're the better coach team. I do feel, I know this might be a minority opinion here, they have the better quarterback. I'll take Stanley over Shea Patterson. I'm wondering when some of this pressure coming on Harbaugh is going to start showing towards Patterson because we remember the the numbers at Ole Miss when he left actually got better. Now we're seeing the offense kind of scuffle in big games at Michigan. Um, it looks like I'm, I'm I'm against it though, two to one with two good handicappers on the other side. How do you feel, Ian? This is a uh, this is a game I'm staying far away from. I want nothing to do with this game from a betting standpoint. I wish I could break the tie and 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 uh, <laughs> go in one direction or the other, but. You know, Iowa on the road in a price range where they're going to have to come damn close to winning the game. Uh, I don't know if I trust them fully yet. I do think they're a pretty solid team. I like the defense, as, you, as usual, pretty solid. Uh, they can run the football great on both sides of the football in the D-line and the O-line. And Nathan Stanley, let's give that guy credit. He's taken progressive steps forward mm -hmm. as a quarterback. He can throw the ball a little bit deeper now. There's a little bit more explosiveness in that passing attack. I was absolutely wronged by Michigan two weeks ago when they got blown out by Wisconsin. I said, I'll take a chance with them. And I said, if they don't get it done for me, that's it. You know, I, I'm staying off them for a, a good amount of time. Uh, and yeah, uh, fool me once, shame on uh, you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Uh, I've been fooled once too many times by this team and this coach, Jim Harbaugh, in a big spot, in a big game. We won't get fooled again. Bum, bum, ba, ba. I won't get <laughs> fooled again here. It's Iowa or nothing. And I decided I'm going to choose nothing. All right, going with nothing. So it looks like two guys, uh, DJ Big Boss and Big Ragu on the Michigan Wolverines. Yes, Michigan is at home in the big house hosting Iowa. And uh, I'm kind of leaning here with the Hawkeyes plus the four going with the underdog in that one. We also got a big one in the SEC, guys. We got the Auburn Tigers at the Florida Gators in the swamp. Looks like the market's pushing this one, taking some Florida money down to as low as two. Looks like two and a half, a prevailing number here. Low total, just 48 and a half. DJ Big Boss, man, you interested in getting involved with War Eagle down I, in Florida? I was really on uh, uh, on Arburn in this one. When I looked at it real good, I, I couldn't take nothing but Arburn, but – um. I don't know, you know, you guys down there, you and Big Ragu, you guys are masters of, uh, you know, those Florida teams and all that stuff. I don't trust Florida Gators' um, offense. Uh, they move kind of slow, the quarterback issues. You know, there's a lot of flaws on their offense, and this can be put to the test to a team that's really feeling encouraged right now. They feeling like they about to be 
top five worthy. You know, uh, they, they're going to be leaning towards being the champion. Like, they, they really gassing these guys up to be the best. And, and, and sometimes with young minds and college players, that's what they need. They need to be gassed up to get over the hump. And uh, I like Arburn in this one today, getting over the hump. Just like some – and I, I, I'm going to tell you, since the Oregon game, I, I didn't really like uh, the way Arburn was playing. I, you know, I, I thought they would crash by now. But I'm learning this year something I didn't do last year. But this year, you know, turn it around quick. You know, evaluate the situation. Uh, you know, turn it around quick. Don't, don't, don't have so much hate in your heart for the mistakes you made in the past or whatever or this team. You know, don't, don't try to place uh, – you know, go ahead and cap it out and uh, try to find a spot and either – Roll with the numbers or don't roll with the numbers. And with Arburn, I'm going to roll with the numbers. I'm going to roll with the gas. I'm, I'm going to roll with it. If they fail me, then, hey, it, it's no more. I'm like Ian with Michigan. It's you know, no more fooling me. I'm out of here. But um, if they cash, hey, it, it was a good situational play that I jumped on and rode the train right here in college. This, this week six, you know, things are going to be separating who's really going to be where, who's really bad, and all that. Those, you know, there's a lot of logistics going on to uh, college football at this state when you're looking at players that's uh, got midterms coming up. They got to travel. You know, the freshman players, or some of them are going to play down. Some of them are going to play up. This is when senior groups are going to be um, – uh, senior groups that play good defense are going to be teams you want to put your money on because they're ready for the load of school, travel, playing ball. So this is an interesting week right here. I've definitely crunched a lot of numbers because uh, the numbers are going to be coming realer and realer as we move on, and uh, you'll be able to rely on some of those stats and numbers a little more than the OI that we've been using since the beginning of the season. So that's why I'm with it right now, uh, Drew. How about y'all? Yeah, no, no, good, good point on the analytics. As we come into conference play and more like competition against each other, the numbers will start to show a little bit more relevant. Um, in, in terms of how I feel, DJ Big Boss, I feel that um, – you know, we got a freshman quarterback going on the road in a tough environment to play. And in really the the previous two times he stepped outside of Jordan Hare, you mentioned the Oregon game. I felt like he struggled. The mainstream media, you know, kind of talks about how he came back and he did have one good drive with that good pass. But before that, I felt like he really struggled. I felt like in the Texas A&M game. Um, the team, you know, relied on, on the defense, a couple big plays. They won on the road. Got to give him credit, but he didn't exactly play well. So he's yet to kind of show his skills on the road. This is the toughest defense he's going to have faced in the toughest environment. I'd look for him to kind of struggle here. It's having said that, you know, Florida has their backup quarterback and trash in. And going up against a, a defensive line that's absolutely going to get after it. And if Florida does have a weakness, it's likely on their offensive line, very inexperienced, going against a really good defensive line. In fact, in my opinion, the best defensive line in the country. I think it's going to be a long day for them offensively. I think both superior units are on the defensive side. I think defense dominates in this. And I bet the under 48 and a half here, Florida versus Auburn in the swamp today. That's what I'm involved in. Obviously rooting for Auburn as an alum, but uh, my money is on the under 48 and a half. Uh, Big Ragu, any follow-up here? Auburn versus Florida? All, all valid points by my guy up there at uh, the Auburn alum. <laughs> Thank Drew you, Martin, buddy. Drew Martin's bring it up, but definitely, yeah. I'm, I have a I have a betting interest here. I sure do. Um, now we've been hearing since the beginning of time this season, anyways, how great that offense or defensive front seven is for Auburn, and they're making a the case for that. And and that's not going to be the issue here as far as uh, whether Auburn becomes victorious or or takes an L in the L column here. Uh, the matchup here is definitely going to be the offensive line of the Gators versus you know, the Auburn front seven. But there's we know that the Florida Gators are not a bad defensive squad either. They can get it. They can come after it. They can make some stuff happen. They're giving less than three yards a rush on the uh, on the uh, on the offensive side, you know, versus them. You know, the whole game, this whole game is – I don't think it's going to be the Auburn front seven versus the uh, the Gators front, uh, front uh, offensive line. It's going to be like you were talking about. It's going to be the look that Knicks gives these guys going forward – down the field, trying to stretch that Florida defense out a little bit. And you know what? To play in a swamp against 90,000 fans, there's going to be a lot of noise up there. It's going to be a tough look for this kid going forward. 
two shaky games coming out that, yeah, they cracked the top seven, the top ten, number seven versus ten. But you know what? I got to take Florida at home in the swamp getting the points here. I just think it's it's going to be a tough environment for him to play in. I think uh, Mullen will have a game plan. Whether they can execute it 100 percent, you know, against that tough Auburn D, it might be, you know, they might have something to say about that. But uh, just history in the swamp, you know, and this matchup, they haven't played up there in a long, long time. Matter of fact, the last game I went to in the swamp was in Auburn when his dad played quarterback up there and threw a last-minute touchdown. That's how long it's been since I've been in Florida. A Florida, other than the FSU Florida game. So I like to look at the Gators here at home. I'm going to be rocking the Gators, getting the points. Mr. Big Ragu in the state of Florida, like in the home team Gators. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Yeah, and you bring up the fact it's been a long time since these two teams have played. I'll tell you, Big Ragu, it's kind of one of the downsides a lot of people don't talk about with conference expansion. You know, geographically, the, the Auburn is the closest SEC team to Florida. And them not having played since, what, 07? That's kind of a, a travesty in college football in my mind. They need to do something to fix that. Either way, uh, from a betting perspective, Ian Cameron at Babano, man, what are you thinking here? with uh, the Tigers and Gators. Yeah, it's a really good game. Uh, it'll be uh, fun to watch. This is the uh, CBS SEC game, uh, so we're looking forward to that. We'll get to hear uh, Nestler and Gary D, and Gary D babble on like he usually does, uh, but that's another story. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, I think, a situation here where I think Florida's offensive line is going to be up against it here uh, with this Auburn defensive front. I mean, remember, coming into the season, Florida was replacing the majority of their old line starters from last year. And now they're going to have to try to combat uh, going up against that ferocious Auburn defensive front in this game. It's really a question of which quarterback do you trust more? Do you trust Trask, who is still growing, who is still, I think, not a finished product, not polished yet uh, in terms of being a starter thrown into the fire now, obviously, because of the season-ending injury to Felipe Franks? Or do you trust Bo Nix, who has come on and played better in recent weeks, including at Texas A&M? Like that performance by him at College Station was impressive. It was against a pretty good team on the road. Signs of him growing, but you could argue that Florida's defense is even a step further uh, and better than Texas A&M. So uh, how will he fare in this environment, this crowd, and an even better defense today? That remains to be seen. I will say this. Now that the number's two and a half, I'm definitely a little bit more interested in Auburn now. Uh, I didn't want to go more than three. Uh, even at three, I was lukewarm. But this to this number's dropped now to two and a half in a lot of places, and I'm going to have to favor Knicks, and I'm going to have to favor that defense of Auburn, uh, even on the road uh, over Florida. You look at uh, Florida, uh, I know they got the job done in the opener against Miami, but they had to you know, struggle and scuffle their way through winning that game. Uh, they've taken care of business since then, but Auburn's going to be a big, big challenge for them. And at less than three, not uh, certainly not a best bet, but uh, I'm kind of interested now, two and a half with War Eagle. Nice. All right, Ian, Cameron, and guys, over 300 people watching right now. And we the really under. appreciate Sorry. it. And the under as well. Uh, give me the under at 48 and a half. I think that total's a notch too high. All right, like in the under and Auburn from Ian Cameron at Babano. And guys, we really appreciate you uh, chime, coming in on Saturday mornings here. Over 300 people watching. And uh, if you could smash the like button, if you're liking the content, that would help us out. And let us know what you're thinking in the chat box on social media as well. Always appreciate it each and every Saturday during college football, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific time. We got uh, money line underdogs we're looking at. We got best bets coming up, but did want to open it up in terms of uh, other games you guys want to throw out in terms of uh, bets you're looking at. We got guys in the chat box. Um, saw donkey capping talking about Oklahoma State minus 10 versus Texas Tech. Yeah, donkey. That is one that I'm looking at. I think that this Oklahoma State Cowboys team is underrated. We got Gundy. He's a man. He's 40. He's got a mullet. He's got a good quarterback as well going up against the Texas Tech team. I don't think they're very talented. I think they're overrated. Kingsbury's gone. That offense hasn't looked the same. And Bowman is out. So um, I, I, I like Oklahoma State. I laid the 10 there. I like where you're going with that in the chat box. Uh, DJ Big Boss, man, in terms of uh, opening up the card here, any other games you wanted to throw out? Hey, I'm, I'm going to have church this morning on this one, and I want to bring all the cabins from the north side, the east side, the west side, the south side. I want to talk about something today. I want to talk about the San Diego State, Colorado State game. Now, I think that the line setters absolutely have no clue in this game right here. Now, they set the line at seven, and it ends up with a hook. Now, what I don't know how everybody in, in the chat right here, you know, we can we can speak on this, we can testify, 
on how do you look at the hook when you look at a, a seven with a hook on it right there. But this game is going to be very interesting. But I think San Diego State's uh, were strong last year. I think they're much stronger this year. They were they were really young last year. They're getting a little older this year with this group. They run the ball very well. They have showed, and you know, this is a team that's a majority running team. They run about um, 52% of the time, but they don't do it that good. they 148 uh, yards a game, but they attempt 46 runs per game. Per game. So they, they like to rush the ball. They take their time doing it. They, they have a uh, total possession of like 33, 34. They're way up there. So I think they control the game in this one. But it's going to come down to uh, San Diego State's defense versus this Colorado State offense. Now, I think this is the best defense that Colorado State has faced so far. But also, this is one of the best offenses that San Diego State has faced as well. But San Diego State has a good secondary. Colorado State likes to throw the ball. And uh, Colorado State manipulated a few teams running the ball. And I think the stats are a little inflated for Colorado State on the offensive side. They're ranked 16 in, in, in offense, 32 points a game, uh, 500 yards a game. You know, they time of possession is like 31 minutes. Um, you know, uh, they're rushing 45% of the time at 181. They're passing 54% of the time at uh, 319. So they, they, it's gassed up on paper a lot. And I think that the line setters don't have a clue right here because it's so gassed up and, and it's so um, – I guess you could say it's even, but it's not even. So um, San Diego State has a number 16 defense. Colorado State has a number 16 uh, offense, if my, if my writing is correct right here. But um, – on the offensive side of the board for San Diego State, they're ranked 109, and Colorado State is 106. So offense versus defense, kind of like a stalemate right there. So I think San Diego State manipulate this. Defense wins games. This is the old coach. He's not switching up. He's not scared. There's nothing right here that uh, it's shying him away from the game. San Diego State is 8-3 and three straight up and ATS versus uh, Colorado State at Colorado. And uh, I think San Diego State defense – prevails in this one and the offense gets the ball moving a little bit i like san diego state despite the hook what do y'all think I, i'm not i'm not involved in that game i i, I haven't bet either one too too much but um i i like what you had to say there D, dj big boss it, it looks like uh could could be value on the side i mean ian big ragu anything on that game or or did you guys want to throw out another game I'll throw out this ball. <clears throat> I'm going to throw out an off-the-cuff game here. A ball State and Northern Illinois, two, two one and three teams, right? It's not, it's not a high-profile game. It's kind of a game that maybe slides under the radar a little bit here. Uh, now, two, this this uh, ball State team, they can score points. You know, they they can put up thirty-plus points a game. And Northern Illinois, you know, the line has kind of shifted down against them. Their, their home team favorite like six and a half down to five, five and a half uh, look here. But I've noticed one thing about both these teams here, uh, especially uh, uh, Ball State on the road. They've only had the really realistically the one one game, and it's a small sample size. But they, they're they only averaging like around eight points in the first half. And uh, and home games for Northern Illinois, they've only put up about three points on the half. So it's a first half look for me on this game. The, the total is like uh, 55 points, and uh, for sh such a short amount of points in the first half, I think we're looking at 26 and a half points or 27 in some spots. I like that look uh, in the first half under Ball State, Northern Illinois, 27 points. I think they stay uh, under. Stay, stay, stay under that total. Little match in there, going under in the uh, uh, deep dark depths of SBS football. A win is a win. You can cash a ticket. A lot of times there's more value in that. And also uh, DJ Big Boss with the uh, play before talking about Colorado State there. I mean, when you when you start talking about, um, you know, Mike Bobo, a lot of times it can be volatility down the end because uh, I know he's kind of feeling a little heat with the seat in terms of how long he's going to be able to stay there and uh, at Colorado State. But uh, so it, it looks like if you can find value in that game as well. Um, two good plays there. We had uh, some questions here in the chat. I think we have a uh, technical difficulty here with Ian Cameron. Uh, Ian, let us know if, if, if you can still hear us. Ian, you there? Yeah, for some reason, uh, Cameron knocked, got knocked out for a second there. But I'm here, okay. yes. 
Uh, yeah, want no me to throw then. a game out? You want me to throw a game out? That's what we're doing, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. All mm-hmm. right, excellent. Let's do it. Um, ugly underdog. You want one? Connecticut. I'm on them. Plus oh, 11 wow. today. Ugly. South Florida can't lay double digits on the road. This team's a disaster. The coach is an absolute fraud, an absolute mess. He's pathetic. Charlie Strong, he's going to be on his way out after this season. This team has done nothing this season in terms of being impressive. They got crushed by Wisconsin. They barely beat the FCS team they played. They struggled with a rebuilding, downtrodden Georgia Tech team, and then they got rolled by SMU last week, the South Florida team. Now you're going to go on the road and lay doubles with this team. And don't forget, UConn gave this team a battle last year when they played this South Florida team. They were really in that game from start to finish. This is a straight fade of South Florida. I'm not saying UConn's really all that good. This is just a straight fade of South Florida as a double-digit favorite, a team I don't trust, an offense that looks broken to me. doesn't matter if it was uh, uh, Blake Barnett or the new guy, McLeod. Uh, it's, a, it's a situation where their offense doesn't look right. The current Bell experiment has been a disaster with him as the offensive coordinator. So far, the defense is a civ defense. They can't stop anybody. They couldn't stop me, uh, DJ Big Boss, Big Ragu, or Drew Martin from running the football and chucking the ball around and putting up some touchdowns against them right now. Uh, yeah, I, I think UConn can hang in there in this game. And all we got to do is ask UConn to show up, be decent, don't make mistakes, hopefully. And we know they're a bad team still with Ed Soul and company. But I do like the quarterback change for UConn. They changed quarterbacks last week. Uh, and this kid that came in there and played for them, uh, Steven uh, Krzyzewski, uh, he's a guy that came in there and played extremely well lit a spark on this team offensively, actually showed some ability, uh, actually showed some skill out there uh, as the, at the quarterback spot once he got into the game. So maybe the quarterback change sparks UConn as well. But to me, this is just all about South Florida can't lay minus 11 right now on the road, period. So give me UConn. Nice. And, and do you like him to, to win outright? Um, would you like it as your, your money line uh, underdog play as well? You know what? It's worth a, worth a shot. Well worth a shot, especially at the nice money line price you're getting. This reminds me a lot like the Akron uh, UMass game where it was just two really, really uh, tricky teams to trust. But at the it was Akron in the dog that ended up winning outright. It was just simple. I mean, uh, or Akron was the favorite. Uh, UMass won outright. It was just one of those situations where, you know, you can't trust anybody as a favorite in a matchup of uh, teams uh, that are not that good. And in this case, that's South Florida. I just don't trust them laying 11 on the road. All right. Good stuff, man. Um, we got some questions here on Ohio State, also UAB. Um, I, you know, Ohio State, I don't feel like I, I got a good look either way, but UAB against Rice. Other than that Rice defense, it has been pretty stout this year. Um, the UAB Blazers are a team that I think are absolutely bet on. Johnson can really throw it. So I would look towards UAB there in the chat box. Another money line underdog I'll throw one out here. West Virginia. Troy Brown, his first year, uh, he was the coach for uh, Troy, the Trojans. And if you if you watched uh, Sunbelt football, you knew that they were one of the premier programs there in the Sunbelt. It will be a couple years until he's fully going in West Virginia, in my opinion. But keep in mind, since they've joined the Big 12, they've been very stout at home in conference. It's kind of a tougher travel spot away from kind of the centralized Big 12 teams. So keep that in mind. Plus Texas, you know, with Oklahoma on deck. Uh, they got that Red River shootout, or excuse me, don't want, want to be politically correct, Red River rivalry on deck. Um, I, I think that it kind of could be a sandwich spot here, a look-ahead spot, looking for a chance to take maybe a big underdog here. West Virginia might be a look, plus 10, plus what, over 300 on the money line. Uh, big Ragu, did you have any uh, money line underdogs you wanted to throw out, man? I, I talked about the money line underdog that I really wanted. I said plus okay. the points, but I like the Gators – I like the Gators mm-hmm. to win that game in the swamp. But I'll give you another one, you know, since we're talking money line underdogs. Now, I, we know Tulane and Willie Fritz has been getting a lot of love. McCleksky off of that big play, you know, uh, exciting win they got at home against Houston. So, I mean, it's a quality program. Now, Willie Fritz, he knows uh, when he was at Georgia Southern, he ran that triple, op- op- uh, triple option offense. They're going up against Army at West Point. Uh, so, similar looks there. He knows how to coach against it. But – I kind of like Army here at home getting the points. I know the line's moving. I'm going to be contrarian. Army's plus three. I'm going to take Army to to stop the two-lane train of late. Army shuts them down. I like Army in an underdog role, not a favorite. And we talked about the Rice squad, you know, going up against uh, UAB. Rice has given a lot of team a lot of fits. They've been a pesky uh, underdog, so I'm going to stay off of that game. But And the Army was uh, one of the teams that Rice played to open up. 
21-7. They, they were three touchdown favorite, way too many points. But here at home, I'll take I'll take my shot with Army uh, uh, getting a plus point plus money line at home against uh, the, the Tulane Green Wave. We got top set and Daryl Lyles in the chat box saying they're like in West Virginia plus 11. Uh, Russell Gordy asking about the Kansas State Iowa State game. That's a good one in the Big 12 and bigger group, man. That I'm glad you, you, you threw that one out. Tulane versus Army. Fascinating handicap here. And it's going off in what just about 25 minutes here, 12 noon kick. So you're like in the underdog Army. Uh, Willie Fritz, like you said, you know, he, he's coached a type of option offense for what over 20 years uh great coach by the way Tulane I think it's a dark horse to win the AAC a tough program they got some uh athletes on that squad also McMillan originally a uh a recruit to LSU transfers to Tulane he's pretty he's killing it at the quarterback position I think it's a tough game for Army um I get the side for Army though man at home Army has been a a stout team to beat so this is a tough ask for Tulane Ian you have any opinion here on the Tulane Army game I know you you've you've involved in the uh, military military academies from time to time yeah that's actually one of the games even though i'm not betting it i'll be watching it it's a good game i like both of those teams Tulane, and i'd rather bet on them than bet against them so i'm not involved uh, in that game personally but it's a fascinating game obviously uh the one thing though about Tulane is even though they're not doing full-on triple option this year uh they're familiar with it willie fritz Mm -hmm. has run, run that before uh they know what's coming from this army team uh that should be a plus for them uh, the question is, can they stop it? Uh, and that's going to be the question. Army does have a very good football team, though, and their coach, Munkin, uh, has done a really, really good job uh, with that program. So it'll be a fascinating game to watch. Uh, you, you say Iowa State, Kansas State? They're playing TCU-Iowa uh, State today. TCU-Iowa State uh, is the uh, game uh, in the Big 12. Uh, and I oh, like yeah, I, pro- I probably misspoke. Sorry, but I was just reading the chat box because I, I guess he was asking about bo- both of the questions. So oh, my both bad, of my... the games. Oh, Kansas yeah. State's game as well. Uh, Kansas State-Baylor's tricky. I'm not, I, I, Kansas State really, really let me down last week. I liked them a lot off the bye against Oklahoma State, and they got shut down. Uh, they really did. That offense did not work uh, against Oklahoma State on the road. Uh, I know it's a situation now where K-State in a bounce-back mode at home now in Manhattan, and they have been pretty good at home this year. But uh, And I'd lean K-State. You know, I don't want to completely say, you know what, I'm not, not going to bet on them now just because I lost with them last week. I would lean to them, but I'm a little – trepidatious and a little hesitant after uh, the way they played last week. We'll see how Baylor does on the road. That was a big win for Baylor last week at home. Uh, we'll see if they can carry it over here. TCU, Iowa State, I like the uh, Cyclones there, uh, minus three. I bet against TCU uh, when SMU went into uh, uh, Fort Worth, uh, won that game outright as underdogs. I'm still not completely sold on this TCU team. I don't think their quarterback plays all that special. Duggan you know, is a run-heavy quarterback. I don't think he's got the greatest arm in the world uh, by any stretch of the imagination. This Iowa State t- team can flat-out play defense, uh, and I think they're going to really get after it. I think that guy's going to struggle a little bit on the road in Ames. I think it'll be a fired-up environment for a Big 12 conference home game. Uh, Brock Purdy uh, and the offense, they've, they've been talking about how they haven't really put it together. They're close. They feel they're improving week by week. I think this could be the week where you see Iowa State and their offense get it going a little bit. TCU, let's not forget TCU's defense a couple weeks ago. That SMU game, they got shredded. So this 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 team against some better competition, TCU, I'm still the I'm still hesitant on whether they have been a or a team that can show that they can step up in class because clearly they had problems with SMU. I think it's a cheap number with Iowa State. On their home field, I'll lay the three with the Cyclones. Ian, you bring up SMU, man, and and talk about teams that are five and zero against the spread. SMU is one of them. Um, I, another one is Auburn. I think it's a little fraudulent just because of that Tulane cover and also Oregon cover in Week One. How real do you think SMU is this year? They're really good. They really, really are good. They're five and zero straight up, five and zero against the spread. The betting markets, the odds makers have been off on this team from day one. They've got a really much improved defense. They really do. And of course, their offense is back to looking like an SMU offense this year because Ben Hicks is gone. Uh, he was terrible last year, and that goes without saying. Uh, Shane Bouchelle has been excellent. They can run the football. They've got a bunch of speed uh, and skill position. Uh, talent on the uh, outside, on the perimeter, at what the wide receiver position. The defense has improved, uh, and it's hard to it's hard for me to admit and stomach 
saying good things about SMU because I'm not a big fan of their coach, Sonny Dykes, to be honest with you. But he does have a very good team this year, talent-wise. They're Again, the betting markets have just been off on this team. They've been mispriced from day one. The question is, they're going to eventually fail to cover a point spread. Will that be today? They're hosting Tulsa, and Tulsa's defense has improved as well this season. But nobody stopped SMU's offense. You look up and down, TCU couldn't stop them. Nobody that SMU has faced has been able to slow down this red-hot, electrifying, potent offense of Shane Bouchelle and company. I kind of like the over in that game. I lean SMU. I'm worried that, hey, this could be the week where the numbers finally caught up. But I, it's SMU or pass. I'm not going against them, that's for sure. But I kind of like the over, 62.5, 63. Both defenses are improved, guys. But don't forget, both teams play fast. Both teams like to throw the ball around. Tulsa does. SMU does. Montgomery plays a fast-paced offense with Tulsa. Uh, Dykes plays a fast-paced offense with SMU. You're going to get a lot of plays in this game. 62 and a half, 63. If you go back and look at recent SMU-Tulsa games, this is a lower total than we've seen in past years between these two teams. So uh, I think it will get over that number. Good stuff, Ian Cameron Appabano on Twitter. Um, DJ Big Boss, man, got to get you in here, man. Did you want to throw anything out? We, we, we got to get to uh, best bets here in a little bit, but I uh, wanted to see what, what else you want to throw out on the card today, man. Um, I, I just had a little action that on uh, the Vanderbilt Ole Miss game. This is a spot I talked about earlier, uh, a team with a lot of senior defense. Although uh, the defensive line has been a little banged up over here at Ole Miss, um, still a senior group right here. Uh, a lot of experience over there. It's a the gutter part of the season. They're at home. Um, they're making some improvements with the uh, quarterback situation, and uh, they've been able to throw the ball a little bit better. So I think they're moving in the, the right direction. And this Vanderbilt team, um, they play really good defense, but uh, it's really kind of like I don't know on offense at times. Uh, they're sized appropriately, so it's, it's going to be a battle in the trenches. I'm going to like watching that. But um, – I'm leaning Ole Miss. The seven kind of has me a little wary with a team like Ole Miss that hasn't really played much offense. But after last week, the quarterback uh, changes and stuff that they had to do over there, playing Alabama, I think that might have been a game that's going to help them opposed to hurting them. Uh, they they looked really good that first, uh, I say, quarter and a half. But uh, I, I, I stopped watching the game when they fell off. But uh, I don't know. I couldn't pinpoint why exactly they fell off. But I did see that on offense they're making improvements. And I think they see this uh, Vanderbilt team and they run away with the victory right here. I like Ole Miss minus the seven. Hottie toddy versus Vandy. Yeah, Vandy's having a tough, tough year. I lean with you there on on Ole Miss as well. Uh, Big Ragu, did you want to throw anything out before we get to best bets, man? So just that look that Ian gave on the uh... – on the SMU, I just put a little note in the chat that the markets have kind of agreed for this may be the, the spot that they uh, they fail as, as a favorite. They, I like them to win the game, but the total, yeah, I would lean with the total also on that. So I would I would look at maybe taking the dog because of the uh, offensive shootout it might be, and then uh, I'm in agreement with Ian on the total. But I'll give you the best bet. You want to lead into the best bet segment right now? Let's get after it, man. Best All right. bets, absolutely. Right. So I'll attack that while we're talking, while I got my yap moving. So I'm looking <laughs> at a West Coast game, and, and it's, a, it's a league that I've been all against for most of my uh, past decade of the gambling career. But, you know, I've had some success recently in the Pac-12, and I'm going to stay in the Pac-12 again here. So early in the season, a lot of people were talking about Washington as being the, uh, the league, you know, the league star, you know, then Oregon, of course, Washington, Oregon, one, two, one, two, either way. And they kind of fell out of favor with uh, with Washington when they uh, went up against that cow. They took that short number loss there. But I think they're back on track here. Uh, the only knock I have on Washington is in the coaching of Peterson. When he gets a pretty good sized lead, he kind of likes to get complacent and, and uh, you know, not do a whole lot of adjusting here. But I think they get off to a quick start against Stanford. Stanford still hobbled, hobbled up on offense. They have, they have their issues, and they probably have one of the worst secondaries in FBS right now in Power 5 uh, play. So uh, the numbers kind of crept up from 13 to 16, uh, but I think it's kind of fell back down a little bit. So I, I took uh, early in the week. I, I like this game a lot. I like Washington in the first half to cover that uh, touchdown number. So I'm on Washington to get the job done in the first half minus seven. That's the number I have. All right, Washington minus seven first half. Good stuff there 
from uh, Big Ragu. We got DJ Big Boss in the state of California. DJ Big Boss, what do we got for best bets, man? Um, this uh, chat here, and uh, you guys kind of spoiled my best bet, so uh, I would just lay it out there lightly. Um, I thought I was the only one who had the, my eyes on the prize at this one, but I guess all the cappers were studying this one. Texas, West Virginia. Now, Texas is 0-5 on road conference openers. Not that that means much, but 0-5, that's a big number right there. But this is a revenge game for Texas, who lost last year 42-41 to at Texas. Now, West Virginia is a very balanced team on offense and defense. Um, I think they're a little undervalued because of all the other teams in the conference that's moving around right now. I think West West, uh, West Virginia might be an oversight right here. I think the points they're giving right here are ridiculous. I can't believe it went up to 11 this morning. Uh, I might have to go in and look and see if it's something I missed. But um, I see lots of value in West Virginia and taking those points, being that they won last year, they're the home team. Um when you look at the uh, Texas offense, which is their strong point, they they have a completion percentage of 72%. Uh, they pass about 52% of the time for 337 yards. Now, the defense over here at West Virginia is only giving up about 201 passing yards per game, and they're keeping the opponent's completion percentage down to about 58. So it's going to be a real, um, a real slug fest right here. Uh, but the standout stud on defense over there, uh, what's his name, Osai, the linebacker over there, two interceptions, 21 tackles, and two sacks in Texas. So I kind of lean under in this one as well. But give me those points with uh, West Virginia as my best bet today, right here on the closing line with all my guys and all my cappers and everybody right here that's watching. Hey, that's me, best bet of the day. All right, West Virginia in the, in the high high watermark here. We got plus 11, right, DJ Big Boss? I've seen plus 11 out there in some places. I capped it last night at uh, plus 10 and a half. So if you can get 11, fine. If not, take it at 10 and a half. I think it's too many points. This game might come down to a field, field goal. And I heard somebody in the chat, or uh, I think it was you, uh, Drew, that said uh, West Virginia got a chance to win this one outright. And like I say, um, 10, 11, that's my number. And teams that I feel that uh, can win outright, I definitely like taking them plus the points. So it's my best bet for the day. All right. DJ Big Boss, best bet, lining up with uh, my money line underdog, West Virginia plus 11. We got Ian Cameron, north of the border in Hamilton, Canada, at Babano on Twitter. What do you got for best bets, buddy? Yeah, I'll quickly uh, throw, throw a rapid fire, uh, and then I'll give my best bet. I like Air Force minus three. I like Utah State LSU over. I like Troy, Missouri over. Uh, there's a bunch that uh, I'm, I'm thinking of right now off the top. I said Iowa State already minus three. I like that one quite a bit. Uh, SMU Tulsa over the total. Uh, but my best bet uh, is going to be a team that was actually rewarded me with a winning ticket last week. And we're going to go right back to the well with them this week. I'm a little bit surprised this number keeps going downward uh, on the opposite side of this game that I like. But I don't mind. I don't get scared off. Oh, the other the t people are betting the other team. That doesn't bother me. We're now going to lay a really good number. I think three and a half with Duke uh, over Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's quarterback is not hundred percent. He's going to play Kenny Pickett, but from what I've read, he's going to he gut it out with the injury he's got, but he's not hundred percent. And I don't want to compromise quarterback on the road against a Duke defense that looks like they're legit. Let's not forget they held Alabama to 14 points, okay, at halftime uh, in the opening game of the season. You do, you're do you doing something right when you do that. Uh, I know Virginia Tech looks like they're in complete disarray, but still, Duke completely shut them down last week. Uh, David Cutcliffe has a defense. Quentin Harris keeps improving, and I think getting better week by week, leading this team at the quarterback spot. Big shoes to fill, obviously, with Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones gone, and now in the NFL, uh, and Quentin Harris uh, starting to show signs that he can lead this team from the quarterback position. This number looks cheap. The pit win against UCF doesn't look nearly as impressive uh, after Cincinnati beat them last night, uh, and now they got to do it on the road, and I'm going to trust uh, – uh, let's be honest, Cutcliffe against Narduzzi, yeah, I'll take my chances that Cutcliffe can out-scheme and out-coach him and out-think him over the course of a football game. And that, and I think Duke the better defense slightly. Pitt's got a good defense too, but I think Pitt, uh, Duke a little bit better defense. And definitely I think offensively uh, they can they can be better than Pitt and obviously their quarterback. I think I trust Harris more than Pickett. 
when when Pickett's healthy. Pickett not healthy. I think that's a big deal against a good defense. It'll show here. I'm going to lay the three and a half with Duke uh, against Pitt. That's my best bet. Duke minus three and a half. Cutcliffe and company. I like it. Ian Cameron, well coached team. We got Big Ragu on Washington minus seven first half. DJ Big Boss, West Virginia plus the 11. Ian Cameron. Duke minus three and a half in a key ACC battle there. Um, like Ian, I'll, I'll add on a couple guys and uh, really appreciate everybody coming in. Uh, almost 400 people watching live on the SBR YouTube channel. Uh, we're here 11 a.m. Eastern time Saturdays throughout college football season. So come back and join us. Always a lot of fun. And I will add on. Well, first, I'll, I'll run through a couple bets here. FIU minus 27 against UMass. This UMass program, especially their defense, worst unit in all of college football, in my opinion. FIU quarterback position, James Morgan getting healthier. I like the Panthers to roll there, laying the 27. Auburn, Florida under the 48 and a half. But my best bet, got to shop around for this, guys. Use SBR odds to make sure you're getting a good number here. Pinnacle just dropped a minus nine on Oklahoma State. There's nine and a halves out there as well. I'll take the uh, best number on the board. Oklahoma State minus nine over Texas Tech. We got Texas Tech banged up at the quarterback position. Looks like good weather too. Not too much win there in West Texas. So I think Spencer has a good game with Mike Gundy's offense. I think Oklahoma State Cowboys roll. I am laying the nine with Oklahoma State as my best bet. So for Big Ragu, DJ Big Boss, Ian Cameron, I am Drew Martin, guys. Best of luck with your bets. Be back to next Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Best of luck, guys. Good luck, everybody. Parting shot, Michigan State plus the 20 points. Take it. I agree. Let's go. Boston College money line.